Okay, welcome back. Um, most Nigerians are in the middle of a, a challenge, shall we say. Uh, let, me not, let me not call it a mess when it comes to financial, the, uh, the whole financial uh, situation of most Nigerians. And unfortunately, it's, it's sort of dollar-led. Now, I was saying that we, we had an expert that was going to come on and talk about this, and indeed, uh, we're ready now. Uh, for Mr. Johnson Chuku. Mr. Johnson Chuku, as you all know by now, is the MD and CEO of Kari Asset Management. Uh, a fine morning to you, Johnson. Thank you very much for making time for us. Good morning, Uncle Yuri. Thank you for having me. Our pleasure, sir. Okay, let, let me just get to the clock, so, you know, our, our, our whole matter. CBN threatens clamp, um, uh, clamp down on currency speculators, because that's our, that's our caption. Of course, there are other issues involved, but let me first of all get your understanding on that, especially, uh, and it's an interesting uh, sort of a talking point uh, caption, uh, CBN threatens clamp down on currency speculators, because um, I've also read some commentary that uh, CBN also needs to examine internally uh, some conflict of interest allegations where some members of the bank um, actually have interest in uh, BDCs, Bureau de Change Operations. Um, first of all, your thoughts on this whole matter about CBN clamping down on currency speculators. Um, Uncle Yuri, I think that is diversionary. Uh, and what I mean, what I mean by diversionary, the first thing you have to ask is who are the currency speculators? Uh, what do they mean by currency speculators? You have somebody who has Naira, uh, who um, three weeks ago could exchange uh, eight hundred and eighty Naira uh, for a thousand dollars. I mean, for a dollar. And then, all of a sudden, two weeks after, he could only exchange um, maybe 920 naira to a dollar. So, and the guy decides to protect himself, or he begins to suspect that naira will devalue further. And then he goes to the market and buys dollar for 920 naira to a dollar, and then holds it. And then, it, because he was expecting that naira would depreciate further, Naira gets to 950 Naira, he sells. That's the best way you're calling a speculator. That he's taking position in, uh, in dollar uh, to go back to Naira position on the basis Naira will de depreciate. The question you ask yourself, if Naira is appreciating, would anybody do that? If you expect Naira to remain relatively stable, and maybe you expect that Naira will only depreciate by from that 880 Naira to 881 Naira, would you do that? No. Mm. Mm. So the question is that it is the current economic, the current uh, fast depreciation of the currency that is making people take such positions. So we, we are beginning to pursue shadow. The first thing you ask yourself is why are people taking dollar positions? So, and stop that motivation, that incentive for people to take dollar positions. And then people will not take dollar positions. The central bank had come out earlier, and, and, and the central bank, I think, I said, look, for those who are taking positions in dollar, they will degrade because we're going to flood the market. Yes, with, uh, with I heard dollar. that. So that should be the focus. For, flood the market, let them lose their, uh, their, 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 their uh, money, or, and then they will, they will not hold dollar. And when, I remember, if you can't remember back to the uh, to uh, when uh, Professor Toledo was a central bank governor, he used to say that Naira is not the currency to hold because Naira was appreciating, and therefore people were selling dollar to hold Naira. So the first question you have to say: humans or economic agents are rational; they will take position that will protect themselves. How how so Johnson? I, did, how I beg your pardon? How did we arrive at this position? Because there was sort of a euphoria. Uh, upon, you know, uh, the uh, Tinumbu administration uh, coming uh, on stream, uh, that they had collapsed the differing exchange rates. Everybody was hailing us all over the world. And the, the thoughts to the ordinary man was that, aha, this kind of thing where you buy cheap here, turn around, go into the next room, metaphorically speaking, and set it, sell it at a higher rate, cannot happen again. Uh, here we are. How, how did this happen? Okay, in the first place, okay, let me say this. I've been an ap apostle, and I still remain an advocate of uh, harmonizing exchange rate and uh, removing subsidy on petrol products. So when that announcement was made, I had a mixed feeling because I knew we were not prepared for it. Um, because I understand how the economy works. 
So I knew it was the right thing to do, but I knew we were not prepared for it. It was done in a casual manner, in the sense that there are certain things that need to precede it. So to harmonize the exchange rate and allow your currency to float, you must have the war chest to defend the currency when the need arises, to intervene in the market and stabilize the market when the need arises, to have the capacity to move the uh, currency in the direction you so prefer. And that was lacking at that point the decision was made. So I had this concern that if we did not, the central bank did not have the watches, what I mean watches, I mean the North Reserve, to maintain Asian stability, we could see a, an unprecedented depreciation of the local currency. And that's what has happened. And I know I convert this in private currency because I didn't want to say it in public so that it wouldn't be like I am setting up a process that would trigger a depreciation of the local currency. But key thing is this. Currency uh, flotation, uh, flotation is good in an economy where you have reasonable reserve or reasonable capital flow or inflow of foreign exchange. That was desirable for Nigeria. Mm. That we ought to have done much earlier than now when we had the, uh, the, the reserve. That was also still necessary to be done now, but we needed to have assessed a support, uh, a reserve support that would have made the central bank have the capacity to sustain to support the currency and stabilize it and uh, 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 imbue confidence in the local currency so that people will now exit the dollar position and take another position. Well, well, I hear you. I hear what you've explained. So that sort of enlightens those that weren't in, in the know. Uh, the other the sort of commentary uh, on that is that why, why would we, you know, uh, go as it were uh, be, before we were ready? And this one leads on to um, the other matter about we are hearing that... Um, even uh, on our, you know, external reserves, it's not as much as we had uh, always thought it was. And um, this is a problem, and it, it leads on to what I will call my primary question to you right now, which is that, what are your thoughts on where these dollars will come from that we are hearing the CBN will flood the market with, and thereby crash it all? What are your thoughts on that? Because we're talking about a scarcity of dollars. Well, interestingly, I have no idea where the money will come from because of the caveat that was included in that statement. I think the statement was by made by the uh, one of the speakers or one of the um, presidential speakers where he said the government will not borrow to stabilize the exchanges. The government is exploring options that will allow, enable the, uh, the currency to be stabilized without borrowing. Some of the options I've, I've read in the papers are too far-fetched, one of which I've heard that they want to sell down some holding in NNPC and some of the government uh, joint venture partnerships. If you want to do a right a, a public offer or an offer for sale uh, of NNPC, you will take a minimum of nine months to more than a, a year to prepare and offer that to the public unless you have a strategic investor who is waiting in wings to be part of NNPC. But you still have to prepare the company's financials. Uh, they have to carry out their due diligence. So I think that is not uh, something you can achieve in a day or two or a week or a month. The other aspects of selling the joint venture uh, assets to maybe to our joint venture partners, then you have to ask yourself, is Shell, is uh, uh, Ajib, is uh, Exxon, are they ready to buy up Nigerian assets today when many of them are selling off their assets in Nigeria? So you have to look at who has the capacity and willingness to buy up Nigerian assets in a matter of weeks without carrying out due diligence, given the issues we have around oil production in the country. So if that is the avenue, that is the only avenue I can think of. There could be other options. Maybe mm. sell part of our holding in, in, in Nigerian liquefied natural gas. Uh, but that would be like selling... Uh, uh, killing the chicken to extract all the egg at the same time. Uh, so, uh, of course, because that's one of the uh, chicks that, uh, that actually laying the golden eggs for the country today. So, I don't know what their mind is playing, but if it is that we're going to assess um, foreign currencies in such a, uh, from such an avenue that does not require us to borrow, these are the uh, issues that they're burning around. Which I like I said are not short term, cannot likely be are not likely going to be achieved in a matter of weeks or even a matter of months. So that means by the time you achieve that, I wouldn't know what would have happened to the local currency. The other options would have preceded this process, which I said that 
the announcement was made without proper preparation. If they wanted to access funding without uh, borrowing, this option they are mentioning now would have been explored. Maybe it could have taken us three months, maybe six months, if we had started that process immediately after the election, uh, immediately after swearing in, and then we would have had a hand on it. And probably we say, okay, we have 50 billion, we have 100 billion dollars, we will flow the currency. And we are assuring you that we will meet all your obligations. For those who had arrears of obligations, aligned with the central bank, they had not been able to assess their price. We would have cleared it on one day. And then, though they would have taken their ancient rate loss, they would have had the confidence that if you come to the Nigerian market as an investor, you will assess your funding when you want to exit. That would have restored confidence in the economy. Nobody would have been taking dollar positions, even within the local uh, market. Yet, we are told, um, uh, at least paraphrasing, if not quoting the uh, acting governor of Central Bank, uh, after um, his meeting with the president, I think it was on Monday, uh, uh, said that in a matter of days, that this matter will be brought under control. And um, he was even warning uh, the speculators. You, you, you've told us your uh, impression about, about people being called speculators. But in a matter of days, they might find themselves losing a whole packet if they're not careful as a result of actions that he was not at liberty to share with us. Uh, the, it was the matter of days thing that got me. And what you've just explained here, I wonder, I wonder really. Well, I also wonder with you, Dr. Yuri, but um, <laughs> he's this. <laughs> <laughs> because we just so desperately want everything to be right. And they seem, the authorities seem to be saying to us to calm down, not panic. It's not as if there isn't an issue, but it is very well in hand. And um, uh, very, very shortly, uh, matters shall, you know, be, be righted. Okay, I, I think what they want me to do is to go on another break, if I'm right. Um, so um, can I just go on another break? I'll be right back to you. Uh, stay with us, please. We'll be right back. And we'll include your phone calls as well. Okay, welcome back. Mr. Johnson Chuku, MD CEO, Kari Asset Management, is our guest this morning as we look at the whole Naira versus uh, dollar, uh, shall I say, match. Uh, in the meantime, Reverend Dominic in Alimosha has called in. Good morning to you, Reverend. Reverend Dominic. Good morning. Good morning, Reverend. Go ahead, yeah, please. Good morning. Good morning to your expert on that side there. Yes, Mr. Johnson. Yeah, le, yeah. I want to respectfully uh, disagree with my friend, uh, 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 Go ahead. Transfer. The expert there have answered it. The expert transfer is a symptom. The expert have answered it well. But uh, let me go to you about oil uh, fuel subsidy. I want to speak to this mentor. The last time I had, all you said is done. So anybody, Mr. Chuku, Chief Yori, I have a dominant question. Why should I and you will tell me the price to sell it? If there's no something. Um, I'm so, uh, uh, Reverend, um, your call is, no fault of yours, is patchy. Um, you know, every other word was being uh, dropped. Um, but I think you are going to make something of a point because you started off by exemplifying by saying neither Chuku nor myself nor yourself, you know, sells uh, petrol. I, I don't know where you were going to uh, land with that, but I, I think you were going to make the case that I've also heard made that even what we are paying now uh, as the pump price of fuel is too much especially when you look at the averages that uh, we, there's a chart that was put out by um, the presidency. Uh, Julian Gilali was saying that he had the, the, the president uh, had approved the you know, uh, showing of this. 
and just about everybody else in our sector uh, was paying close to, what, uh, a thousand, a little over a thousand naira per liter of fuel. And um, the point was made at the end of it all that uh, we still have the lowest pump price of fuel in our region in Africa here. Um, uh, Johnson, could you help us make sense of that? Because, yes, the figures will be, uh, they, they will be right. But it is the interpretation, the meaning, perhaps, that we now need to know. Because you hear people say that, eh, but what is the standard of living over there? What is our standard? But coming on that whole point about putting out a chart showing that we are looking quite good, as a matter of fact, uh, when you look at it compared to other African economies. Um, what we have to bear in mind when we talk about the price of any commodity in any locality is what we call purchasing power parity. That is one of these is that what is the equivalent of your household income that you are spending on that item compared to the equivalent of household income or the other party is spending. And, and let me bring it graphically to our understanding. When you talk of the impact of fuel, the cost of fuel to an average Nigerian household, there is a disparity between an urban household and a rural household. For instance, the people in my village, they hardly consume fuel other than the few people who are where to do the buy fuel for their uh, past my neighbor generator. So the impact of price of fuel on the average rural dweller in Nigeria is not as high as it is to an urban dweller in the, in the country. I guess you understand what I mean. So when you're going to compare this, you have to ask yourself, what is the average income? What is the percentage of an average household income in a place like Benin Republic spend on fuel compared to an average household income in a place like Legora spend on transportation? So the average household in Benin Republic may not spend up to 5% of their household income on transportation, while as the person who lives in Lagos, who lives in Akumojo, or lives in Egbeda, or lives in, uh, in, in Kokomaiko that comes to work in, 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 in VI spends about 40 to 50 billion of his income on fuel. So it's not just uh, comparing, you're not comparing Apple to Apple. In, in, in US, a gallon could cost you a dollar, but an average household, what is a dollar to an average household yeah. in America? Yeah, I But see. what is a dollar to an average household? It's almost 50 naira to an average household. How much the minimum income in Nigeria is 30,000 naira. So when you spend um, almost a thousand naira on a liter of fuel, you have spent what percentage of your income on a liter of fuel. So that's the cross of the matter. We have to compare Apple to Apple and they have to look at what is it, well, how much is an average Nigerian family that lives in an urban area today spending on transportation compared to how much does an average, average household dweller in a city like Accra spend on transportation? Accra is a small location. How much is the cost of transportation? How much percentage of their income do they spend on transportation? That's the issue we should be dwelling on. So mm. for an average Nigerian household, they are spending so much today on transportation. Many people, I've seen people who say, look, I live in a place like Akumojo. Mm. I come to work in Lagos. I have a car. I'm spending 60% of my income on transportation, on buying, on, on buying fuel. That's what we need to dwell with when we want to do this, this comparison. It's not, it's not just uh, banding figures around. You have to look at how does it impact on average household in your country. Okay. Well, thank you, Johnson. Um, uh, Mr. Yusuf in Takum, Taraba, good morning to you. Good morning, Uncle Yori. Good morning. Thank you for calling in. Yeah, so, uh, Uncle Yori, actually, I have to uh, I have a two points which I will raise. I have to commend this president for taking the bull by the horn, try to be sincere, try to let the people know what is going on, which is good. He laid he lay the carpet street. So, the, 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 the technocrats, I, would, I, I agree with him on the technical aspect of it, but for the time lag, I disagree with him. You see, to be sincere, the, the dollar, the dollar outside the economy is than three of what is in the economy. It's a real problem. Everybody knows this. There is a, we have a short term and we have a long term. In a short term, if all these mechanisms of the government can make sure that the volume of dollar outside the economy coming in a short time, this will work. Then in the long term, by the time the investor call me, encourage them, the Naira will be the value everybody will enjoy. You see, when you, are, when you want any policy you want to bring, you must think about the political aspect of it. We have people that want to sabotage this policy from the beginning. We pray things work the way we want. So it's, it's not easy. The time lag is okay. It's okay. It's okay because you need to plan 
a lot. We think the time lag is, is, is okay. So well, when you say uh, the time lag, when you say the time lag is okay, could you clarify what do you mean by that? You see, by the time the, the president lay his game initially, you know, there's one of a political game that may make that may not make him to achieve his certain things at a particular time. Okay. Considering that a lot of things has happened in the previous you know, government is continuity, we know that okay. there's a lot of volume of money okay. Okay. in the hand of the people previously. So, I'm oh, okay. Th thank you very much, uh, Mr. Yusuf, uh, calling in from uh, Takum, uh, Taraba. Um, uh, now, Johnson, to return to you on this whole question of the Naira versus the dollar. The other main allegation out there, or shall we say accusation, quite frankly, never mind the allegation, is that people are actually hoarding the dollar. Uh, those, there are a few of us who don't, don't need to worry about where prices are. It doesn't matter whether they are right where they are. It doesn't matter whether they've gone five miles into the sky. They are such that they can afford whatever it is. But they, using this there, Humongous might, as it is perceived to be, actually now mopping up the dollar and holding on to it because of the very reason that you explained at the beginning of the program uh, when I brought up the whole matter about speculators. Um, w again, what would be your, your thoughts on that, that hoarding of the dollar is part of the problem that we are having here? Uh, uh, the key thing is that you are just by referencing back to what I said earlier. Um, the, if you are worried that people are hoarding any item, key the incentive for them to hoard it. Uh, and if you talk of hoarding, you are basically saying that somebody has bought dollar, uh, he, he has no need to keep it, but he decides to keep it for now, hoping that Naira will depreciate further and then he will sell it. That's basically what they are saying. So all you just need is key that incentive, frustrate that incentive, make Naira to appreciate and the person will rush back to the market to come and beg for who will buy it from him or her. So that, that for me, is what we should focus on. And I, I'm focusing on what is the solution to behavioral actions of humanity or human beings. And uh, uh, so if somebody has uh, 100,000 Naira, for instance, and uh, that could have bought the person maybe um, um, a thousand, uh, maybe previously, maybe $1,200, and he has $1,200, and then decides to hold it, and then holds it until he gets to maybe he will not get get value of one uh, one twenty thousand naira or maybe uh, or two uh, one fifty thousand naira, and you are blaming the person for taking that action. The, the key thing is that the, if I were a policy maker, I would take measures to make sure that that person who is holding that dollar will be forced to sell it because. He's seen and not appreciating it, and he want, doesn't want to lose money. No, nobody wants to lose money. And the key thing is that we must recognize that we don't have enough supply of dollar in the economy. That's the cross of the matter. Mm -hmm. So the issue we should focus on is how do we improve supply so that we will stabilize the currency, we will possibly allow for some level of appreciation of the currency so that anybody who is in dollar position will want to sell, and that will further improve supply in the market. In, indeed. Thank you uh, very much. Um, Mr. Adeni in Oyo, good morning. Sir, Mr. Ayori. Good morning. Thank, Thank you very for much for the job well done. I really mm -hmm. appreciate you. Thank you very I much. I think our EU is continuity in government. Once you have the right institution in place, yeah. once you have the right institution in place, all these things will fall back. The EU is continuity. We should forget about the APC or PDV, any party that comes in. Once you have the right institution in place, all these things will fall back. Investor will come in. Look at the cost of inflation and everything. Now, you are bringing a car, look at LAT, that much is a new car. But now, look at the way you are buying it. The, all this, I'm sorry I'm diverting, but all these are things that have Look at the multiple taxes we are facing. I appreciate this, uh, Dr. Oyeleye, I think, or something like that, in charge, the man in charge of the PT President Tax Force. I appreciate all this effort. But if you look at our cost from the cost of everything, all these things have to be in place. So that if investors will come, once you have an enabling environment, this dollar will naturally fizzle out. We don't need to spend that here. You can imagine some people want to pay out there and they charge them in dollars. You have to pay in dollars. We don't need to dollarize our economy. That's the area I'm coming in. 
and my submission is we should have the right solution in place. Once we have it, things will fall in naturally, and investor will come in. That's my submission. Thank you very much uh, for calling in, Mr. Adeni. Uh, Johnson, could I just return to um, the point you made before we went away and uh, when you were saying uh, it's because that brings me to the question. Okay, I've heard your, your suggestion. So how do we actually go about increasing the supply of uh, dollars? Um, you know, what, it is petroleum that we have. Right now, it is exp the price is high. Is, are there any, uh, any ways there? I mean, how do we just show up the supply of the dollars? Because it's very low, the demand is very, very high. There's so few dollars. But such high demand, they say that is part of what is causing this pressure. How do we increase the supply? I think we had actually asked that question earlier when I said that if um, uh, the government wants to insist on the fact they're not going to borrow, um, it's yes. a difficult call for me to make. Uh, if I were the one driving the economy, the first thing I would have done is that I would go to IMF, International Monetary Fund, and get uh, bal balance of payment support uh, facility from them, uh, which is to enable me meet short-term balance of payment difficulties like we're having today, uh, because we are going to have outflows above uh, that are more than inflows. So if I can assess a support from IMF, uh, a balance of payment support from IMF, or I will go to uh, any of the friendly uh, central bank, like Federal Reserve Bank of US or any uh, of uh, Bank of England or any of the banks that the Nigerian government have such a good relationship with, and uh, assess such funding. Then the next thing is that I will make arrangement for the next nine months to one year to sell some percentage of this company that the government is buying around and want to sell, maybe a percentage of NNPC, 20, 30, 40 percent NNPC, uh, sell some of the joint venture uh, assets, and that would have given me enough time to prepare and get investors to uh, buy, buy those assets. So with that funding I will get from that, uh, the sale of those assets, I will pay down on that uh, uh, balance of payment support line I would have, I have gotten. And then I will be in position, I would have stabilized the currency, I would have restored confidence because once you uh, meet some of these obligations that leading people to panic uh, by uh, bidding for a dollar at any rate, uh, there will be some stability. Uh, people who are panicking will stop, stop. Those who are speculating will stop. Foreign investors will begin to think that there is liquidity in the uh, Nigerian currency market and that if they come in, they can exit. And then you could see uh, a lot more foreign uh, capital flow into the economy. These things will take between nine, six and, and 12 months to achieve. Then at that point, uh, I will achieve stability. And then by the time I sell those assets, which could take me up to 12 months to achieve, uh, I will have a lot more resources and then I can move the currency in the direction I want to move it. Okay. But I would have achieved... Uh, in the local currency. Okay, but except that experts, well, some experts, and you must have heard them, are saying the very last thing we should do is approach the IMF. Well, 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 give me your commentary on that. Wait, that's the very last thing. Nigeria should make sure that whatever you do, do not approach the IMF. One, why are they that apprehensive? Two, what do you think about their apprehension? Well, I think the appreciation is based on the fact that IMF would have given us, will give us conditionalities. Uh, well, IMF bullying always come, come with conditionalities, which is why I said at the beginning of my commentary that uh, some of the things should have, we should have done, we did not do before we take the actions we took. Um, and one of those conditions that IMF would already have given Nigeria, if we had approached them much earlier before we took that policy, is you have to harmonize the exchange rates, which we have already done. So uh, I don't know what other new condition they will come. Normally, they will come with condi conditionalities. Uh, that those conditionalities are all, all, always on, almost intended to make sure that you don't fall back to the position you found yourself in. And the two conditions that they have been binding around is that uh, remove fuel subsidy, harmonize the exchange rate. So if I approach them with the intention to do these two uh, issues, we would have got assessed their funding without further conditions. But for those who are saying we shouldn't have access, uh, approach uh, IMF, what I have done is I have shown the order of priorities of measures I would have taken if I was the one running yes. the economy. Yes. So they, what they need to tell us is that what is the order of priorities measure they would have taken to stabilize the economy, uh, improve confidence of the economy, and allow the economy to function effectively. There's no economy that functions effectively where you have such level of macroeconomic stability as it relates to a critical price element 
and foreign exchange is one of the critical price elements. It has distorted a lot of things, including the price of where we're talking about, including food inflation, including other cost of living of the average Nigerian. So we must have, have a hang on it. So let them tell us what the order of how they want the country to resolve this issue. <laughs> okay, then. Um, go, uh, uh, Ada uh, in Joss. Good morning to you, ma'am. Sorry for keeping you waiting. Go ahead, please. Good morning. Uh, good morning to your, yes, uh, Mr. Johnson. Uh, it's Adam, I'm not calling from your party. Yes, he has said it all. Oh, yes, I know what he's saying. All, 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 all I want to say here is that we should stop dollarizing our uh, economy. Okay, now the problem we are having is, is systemic, you know? Okay, when we, okay, when we, as we know, we are going to import cars, uh, we want to have cars. Can those cars be manufactured here or whatever? Why must we import it, you know? And even if uh, we want to have a plant, thanks to those people who are going to assemble these uh, cars, can they come here and establish the plant and whatever? That is the problem we're having with the economy. And then why must we be focusing on just the oil sector, which is the crew that we are sending out, which is even an, another an anomaly? Why can't we uh, focus attention on the non-oil sector I and mean, increase our exports so that we can have more of the dollar and all that, you know? So just like your guest said there, when you give room for the dollar to be... Yeah, I mean, I mean, depreciation. What do you expect? People will want the uh, dollars, and that's that's it. And then I used to be, I used to wonder. Even sometimes you will hear that when they are giving out uh, some prizes or whatever for performances in whatever, you will hear that they have donated the uh, central dollars to the players who perform. You know what? It's ridiculous to me. You know what happened to our naira? We keep on playing down the mission of the naira. Then when it comes to what Igalani is saying for the government, well, he's saying what he should say because it's what he's paid for. How are they going to do that differential? The people reporting they're getting this well, they said they are getting it in the market, they said they're getting it at a very, at a very high cost. How are they going to sell below that price? What is going to happen now is that if either the first company will come back to its back door, we go back to square one, they call it one other name, other under the recovery or whatever differential, you know, we go back to square one. Or there will be the, the, the independent market will hold their fuel. Then there will be a lot of fuel in the, in the mega stations that we're selling at that government price. After some time, we'll be forced, the market will be forced to now buy at that unofficial rate of the independent market. So, what are we talking about? All the semblance of Nigeria it shall be well. All right, then. Thank you very much. Uh, sort of a frustrated tone there from Ada. Uh, but then one can understand it. What with the newspapers reporting a 24% inflation rate uh, that is worsening uh, the plight of the ordinary uh, Nigerian? factoring it into all of this. But uh, Ada brought up there that, you know, all of us in Nigeria, uh, government, everybody, we're sort of concentrating on, 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 on the petroleum sector, understandably. Um, but there was a time when oil wasn't so center and forward uh, back in the day. Or we remember, the, it's almost like a cliche now, talking about all the ground nut pyramids and uh, all of those kind of things. Um, are those days gone forever in terms of, yeah, oil is good and we shall take what we can get from it, but we are also diversifying and developing uh, other uh, revenue earners. What can we do in that regard? Well, you know, uh, diversifying economy is a medium to long term uh, approach. Uh, you really can wake up today and begin to export uh, vehicles or manufacture vehicles. There are processes that have to take place for us to get to back to that point, uh, which is what should be the focus. And I think that should be the economic re-engineering uh, of, of the country should focus on that. Uh, we've been marketing it for quite some time. Um, we need to have multiple export commodities. We need to have a value addition in the commodity we export today. We have a lot of, we are blessed with a lot of natural resources. Uh, but we are not, uh, bene we don't have beneficiation. Beneficiation, we're not adding value to some of those natural resources so that we begin to export them. Uh, and like I said, that should be the net focus of uh, our strategic re-engineering of our economy mm. so that we move away from oil as a dominant export commodity. Mm -hmm. uh, we have solid minerals. Uh, we should be able to exploit our solid minerals, not just exploit, exploit them as they are in their natural form, uh, we need to create value to them. Look at issues around um, exporting, producing uh, granites, I mean, ref um, polishing and refining granites in the country. We shouldn't be cutting the slabs and exporting the slabs and bringing back uh, the uh, polished granite. We already have the, that stone here. We should do that locally. Uh, there are several things we can produce 
uh, instead of importing them. But some other things have to take place. We must produce efficient, which means we must have power supply, efficient power supply at reasonable cost. We must have efficient logistic uh, transport infrastructure, rail lines, uh, as well as seaports for uh, inf uh, importation and exportation of uh, finished goods. So um, we must have. It's not a, a short term. Uh, it's not a short term measure, as you said. But uh, we'll get there. Yes. Let me bring in our last caller, Mazi Okorafo. Good morning to you, sir. Good morning, sir. Good morning, I guess. You see, sir, when you talk about the diversified economy, there is no state in this country that doesn't have natural resources. If states, local governments are financing their natural resources and make it into use, to generate the new the economy will that they will create employment for everybody, not only the youth. Now, people talk about the CBN uh, uh, circulator system. Who sends this money to speculators? Is it not from banks? Who gives money to banks? Is it not CDM? What is happening? There is no room for monitoring. There is no room for regulation. There is no we make policy policy. The monetary policy of Nigeria that there is no monitoring. That is why it's speculation cannot end. Whether you like it, no matter it happens, whether we have the whole of the local government, DSS everywhere, I mean, you cannot stop speculators. Unless it's have been monitored at it. If you send money from Central Bank, maybe at their state. To any bank, at the end of the day, there's somebody to monitor and know how who are from which source to where who are, who are with the people. That is it. But because you don't do that, and there's no way you can sort of. Nigeria, the economy is very, very rich. Ask yourself, why do colonial masters still come to Africa, not only Nigeria? Because they know that they come here, carry our natural resources, go back to their rich and refine their sell back to them. But here, instead of us to go and get those equipment and come here to Nigeria, I do what? And that's all those who believe it. Everybody starts asking them, boy, 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 boy. Good morning. Good morning, Mazio <laughs> Kurafo. Thank you very much uh, uh, for calling in. Uh, so, well, uh, uh, Mr. Johnson, Chuku, uh, we, 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 we come to the end of it, and you can see with all of these problems on the ground, this is exactly why nobody wants war. You might say, ah, ah, that's an odd, where are you coming with that? It's going to cost money, and uh, so that's why President Tinubu is doing all he can for dialogue to take the day and uh, let it not go to the last option because uh, this is not a good time at all uh, for Nigeria to be spending uh, money that we could be spending elsewhere on uh, a war that would be our responsibility as a member of ECOWAS. Is that a question for me? Or just well, that, yeah, that, just uh, for a comment, really. Well, uh, you know, um, uh, Yuri, uh, Uncle Yuri, last night I was thinking of the issue of well, there are about four, four or five reasons why Nigeria should not even contemplate going to war. One of which is that, what you just mentioned, we do not have the economic resources now to deploy uh, our military in an external confrontation. Two, we don't have a motivation. Uh, there is no incentive that our people are, boys who are really going to fight to die because they have no motivation. They're not defending their country. And they, it's for them, it, there's no compelling need to export democracy to another country when we are still battling with democracy in the country. Three, there is filial relationship between the northern part of the country and Nigerians. So we will be fighting our own brothers in some form. Particularly, and that's why the North is opposing this. And four, our military is already overstretched from internal uh, 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 conflicts, uh, issue of insecurity around the country. They have military men deployed even at checkpoints. So you'll be overstretching already an overstretched army. So I think for those four reasons, let me go not mention the fifth one. Yes. Uh, I think Nigeria should not contemplate going to war. That is not, shouldn't be an option for us at all. Indeed. Well, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Johnson Chuku, for you know making time for us this morning. MD and CEO of Kauri Assets uh, Management Limited. As always, we appreciate your, your knowledge in these matters and sharing it. Thank you very much. Okay, then. My pleasure.